uh, let's imagine that we, ah, okay, I need to put start in the chat. Okay, good. Thank I you. have done that. Thank you. Um, so let's imagine that we, um, as we said, we had uh, some data uh, to analyze, uh, and then we want to, we'd like to compare uh, these groups of uh, this data, that, which is, uh, you can imagine, is divided within uh, groups. Uh, and, and so we want to compare these groups by mean, uh, uh, looking at the difference between these mean values. Okay. Um, obviously, um, this is one uh, of the most famous techniques, statistical techniques, which is used uh, in general to do uh, that does this work very well. Uh, and uh, um, we are talking about the ANOVA, which is not usually under these terms, eh? but um, uh, uh, it's to compare uh different models uh in, in the meaning that what does is comparing the mean so or the estimated mean values okay right so it's uh been uh developed by sir ronald fisher in the early 20th century and um so it's still uh, uh very well in in usage what we are focusing on is the one-way ANOVA. So, and what, what's happened here is, as you can see in my, uh, in my uh, notes, uh, this is the simplest form of ANOVA. Uh, and it's applicable when dealing with multiple groups of observations. And it is used to uh, discern variation, so identify variation in an outcome variable. Okay, so the chapter, the book presents um, different examples, a different type of data. One, is this one here, the clinical trial that you can find in the data. There is a data folder uh, in the website. If you click on it, it downloads all the data. Uh, so this data here is of uh, two type of drugs. So it's a clinical trial, okay? So some, some of the people is under placebo, so which is a fake drug, so just a, like something that is supposed to be a drug, but it is not. Uh, and uh, uh, this, this medication, which is, uh, so these two groups are compared within each other to see whether uh, this uh, drug is effective uh, for the purpose which is made um, and uh, for this reason it's compared to uh, another group of people uh, which are not taking it, but they believe it, they do it. Okay, so here we have, uh, as you can see, I did this uh, grouping by drug and I, I, wait, um, yeah. sorry, I cannot hear you well, but I'm not sure if it's my connection. Um, no, 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 my, my, and, I don't know uh, what is going on. It's my, I, 
because I was hearing very well, very clear, but suddenly I started to hear um bad, but let me where I where I can where I can you should you should be able to and now, yeah, now I can hear you well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know I um, I shouldn't use them. I don't know why. They are original uh, iPad thing, but they, they, they do not work. Because of the Bluetooth, uh, it's not, I don't know why. But anyway, so uh, yeah. what I was saying is that we have this, um, uh, this data set, which is uh, um, not very big. But we have 18 observations. Uh, and so the um, participants are divided between three groups. One is placebo and, and the other two are two uh, type of drug. Okay. And uh, so they want to see uh, if uh, taking placebo, not TRB. Uh, and so the, they, they are looking at different things. Okay. But, but the purpose of this uh, Things that we uh we can uh consider the mean and the standard deviation, for example, and so we can see uh the different values. And I've used the tidyverse and uh, the group by then the frame. Um, and then uh, it uses uh this uh, Q uh, G plot uh, package to plot the mean plot means. And so we can uh, just apply this formula, uh, the mood gain, because they are looking so that without losing the, the purpose of the, this book, um, I like to, to stop for, for a second and uh, just uh, remind ourselves that uh, what we are doing here is um, a tutorial for psychology students. So um, this is, um, as I said, um, we are looking at the moods. Okay. Uh, gain it um, after I've been, after taking, having taken certain type of drug. Okay. So, uh, I'm not sure about, um, okay, this is uh, mood gain. Uh, I don't want to stop uh, very long on that. But, so, we can see that if we plot the means uh, of this, um, mood gain um, by drug, we can see that uh, the mood is higher with this type of drug compared to non or so this other one. And so what, what we, uh, what is done is uh, to use the ANOVA in particular, the one-way ANOVA, to um, look at the uh, at the destruction, as I said, as we said uh, uh, last week or two weeks uh, uh, behind. Uh, so we want to uh, disprove the null hypothesis. Okay, so. Uh, our new hypothesis is it, it is true that the mean of placebo, the mean that this drug A and the mean of this drug J are equal. So we will, and well, the alternative hypothesis is that they're not true. Okay. And so what is done is um, it is you, you are going to look at the uh, variance of the, um, the of the mood gain uh, and the average of the mood gain grouped by groups, okay? So like those one that are in placebo, those are 
uh, in drug one, A, the other one is uh, in drug J. So um, and this is a way to, to you, you consider the, the variance uh, and then um, decide if it's the variance is uh, uh, the certain level, means something, if it's a level, something else. And so, uh, but we go forward within the chapter and we use another uh, type of uh, example. Uh, let's say we have this uh, five, uh, there were five uh, people. Uh, one name is Anne, Ben, Kat, Dan, and okay. So some of them are cool, some of them are uncool. <laughs> Okay, so I I I reminded you the purpose of this this book, and so they are looking at the grumpiness, okay, of these people, but they have a certain level of grumpiness. Okay, some some of them like this um this this one here this Dan, it's it's really grumpy. It's a, as a ninety one as a level of grumpiness. Okay, and so uh, as well as uh, before, um, here this um, classical way to to do a sample uh, some call variation. Um, here it's considered just one group. It's it, it's not a double uh, uh, grouping. Um, so this is just one group. So you do. Uh, you can do step by step, uh, and then you then end up to doing the, the sum of squares. And so you do this just this part of the variance that we have uh, uh, mentioned before. This part here is called um, the sum of squares, obviously, because it's a summation of the squares of the the difference between the observation value, the specific individual observation value minus the mean value. Okay, and this mean value, it, it's not the mean value of the entire number of observations, but it is grouped. So let, let, let's have a look at the, let, then we can compare the, the, the sum of square um uh considering um, um so do yeah yeah uh so what it is doing is comparing the this dispersion i mean the yeah the dispersion of, within each yeah. group right like yeah the variation only the that part yeah. the variation. just but and then like um I mean, just grouping them, summing them. And not, just, not, just, not, not just grouping them. So you mean, okay, the variation means that you are identifying a point and then you are looking at other points and you want to, what you want to is um, to identify the distance between your, um, um, in, uh, objective point to the, the respect of the other. Okay. Right. And so, in this case, we are looking at the mean value. Okay, uh -huh. which is our central value. So we are looking at the mean value, and we are we're then looking at the value, of our observations values, uh, to see what is the distance between the assertion and the mean value. Obviously, if we have a certain number of observations, then this number of observations are grouped. Okay, so mm -hmm. you are not taking the, all of them in one go. Okay, you are taking them, dividing them by groups by in this group. case. Yeah, a placebo, drug A, drug J. And then you calculate right. the mean, the group, uh, the mean group, right? And then you're looking at these values. What is the distance? The distance means 
the distance is intended in this case as the dispersion or the variation by the mean. Right. Okay. So, okay. and then yeah. uh, uh, there, there is a um, uh, very specific statistical test, which is the after. Uh, and this is going to consider the degree of freedom. But what is the degree of freedom? Okay, the degree of freedom is the number of variables that you are considering influencing your objective, the objective that you are looking at. Okay, this is can vary. You you can consider one or uh, n minus one degree of freedom. Is is one like you do? Let let's imagine that you do a linear model. Okay, and you have a response variable, and then one of you you use within your model just one predictor. Okay, so you in that case you are using n minus one degree of freedom. Okay, so uh, you you are um, in the n is number of uh, your uh, um. um now, the total number of predictors. Let's imagine you have a, number, a certain number of predictors. So the degree of freedom is the, the degree of freedom that you assign to your uh, data analysis. OK? And it's obviously um, it depends by the researcher and the, the, uh, what, what is your objective and what you want to do. It depends by the correlation between the predictors uh, and so many things. And so you carry on an F test, okay, to see whether which one, what number is the, the right number that you are going to use, okay? If you need like three predictors, one predictor, ten predictor, or all of them, okay? So this this is just a very general explanation of of those things, and what what is actually done is basically the sum of square divided divided by the number of the degree of freedom. This degree of freedom, as you can see, the variance uh, here is divided. This is the sum of square, OK? Yeah? And it is divided, where is it? Yeah. This is the sum of square. It is divided by n. n mm -hmm. is the number is the number of observations, OK? So yeah. Mm, uh, in some in some senses, uh, in some cases, this number of observations are considered as predictor, as predictors. In some other cases, are just observations. So you can um, obviously, when you do modeling, you use all your <laughs> much of your observations, uh, uh, but the, this is um, a different, uh, you know. Uh, um, this is just to to let you understand uh, the 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 freedom that you assign to your analysis. Okay, it depends by selecting within your data. In this case, n is the number of observations. Okay, and so we are now what what we want. It's basically grouping our data by a certain number of observations each. Okay, so we are good. And so we um, in this way assign a certain number of degree of freedom to our uh, sum of square. And we put it here as a denominator. Okay. And this is defined by the type of uh, uh, grouping that you're doing. Then the F test is the proportion of these two type of sum of squares divided by the degree of freedom. I don't know if I make it a bit like um, I pass it to you the understanding of the thing. But let, let's have a look at um, what's happened here. So we have, uh, uh, because it's confusing, so I have. Uh, uh, somehow can be uh, so 
we have a, um, a, a data a third type of data set, which is again a clinical trial. So we have uh, three of them in placebo, two of them in a certain type of drug. Okay. So we have a certain outcome, which is Grampians, I think, or Mood or something like that. Uh, with a, uh, some specific values, and there is a group mean. Now, this is the first, uh, you know, uh, things that um, was time consuming to me. Okay, if you look at, at the group mean, okay, I have two groups. Okay, so if I do the mean of this group, it is not 0 0.45, okay? So, but then I, uh, you know, uh, went forward because this is assigned as to be, as the two, these two values, as we can imagine we have a larger uh, set of observation. And so, we know that the group mean for placebo is 0.45, uh, and the group mean for this drug is 0.72. So we have these two group mean. What we do is to, to calculate the variance, okay, as we did it with the classical formula, which is the sum of square divided by the number of observations. What we do is uh, building up our data set with all the information that we need to do the uh, divide. So first thing that we do, we do the mean deviation, so the deviation by the mean, so the difference, so the distance of this um, outcome uh, by the main group in this case, okay? So this is o o uh, 5, this is mining minus 0 0.15 and so and so on and so forth. So they, they, we have we got just five deviations. Then what we do is this uh, square value of this mean deviation. And you can see here so the outcome minus the mean and the mean deviation squared. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, let, let's. Uh, now we can calculate the uh, sum of square. So as you can see, okay, here the, there was a, a bit of math. Uh, math. Um, I mentioned very poorly. Uh, okay, so the sum of square here, okay, it's um, if we do the sum, as you can see, its value is 0 0.0025. So, uh, is this this column here? If I do the sum of uh, this okay. I need to, to say data three and the uh, and so if I run this and then have a look at again. We can see that we have a slightly different values. So we have 0.2643 and here is 0.2614 uh, and uh, this is uh, as you can see values are slightly different it is a matter of roundness uh, because most probably these values were uh, with some other decimals afterward so we are not we we don't have them okay so in this case, in case you you had them, uh, you you should 
uh, have here 0.0136 instead of having 0.0144. So this is a matter of roundness. So let's let's um, assume uh, that this is not a very uh, huge difference. Okay, it's even the um, units of the uh, of the results that you are analyzed. It's a, it's it's a, something that it is very important. In this case, uh, we uh, because we are using this uh, tool. If we do this difference, so this minus this other one. This uh, 0.0029 is a huge difference. So, um, so this is a matter of now roundness. Okay. So what's happened here that we? Uh, uh, so this is a um, let let's just grab this thing and put it here. Yeah, just copy and paste. So what we have is, this is the clinical trial. This is the clinical trial, uh, I don't know if you remember, that was the, the very, at the very top, the first that we used. Okay. So, um, and then our outcome is looking at the mood gained by using a placebo or this other type of drug. Okay, so we said this as the outcome. The groups are the drug, and the group mean, what do we do to calculate? We use this function T apply. Uh, this is what does it basically apply the function mean to each group. And then we group, uh, we'd like to see this, select just uh, the value by the groups. And then we calculate the variation and then the, the, the value. Let's have a look at what's happened here. Okay, so we have outcome, which is this. And the, uh, so this is the, the group, okay, and then uh, I, I would like to stop here. Um, and so, what we do is apply this function, which is T apply. Look at this stuff. T apply is uh, applying a function over rugged array. Okay, because this is um, an array. Okay, so we have um, the outcome and the group. If we put them together, okay, such as um, in a matrix, we have outcome and group. These are not. Uh, numeric, so we cannot see, but uh, you might want to see. Okay, this was uh, like a T bone. Can have a look at. So we we are in this condition, and what we are applying to these values is the mean. Okay, and this is done by group, so uh, it's a function that allows to to do this. Okay, so there, there is other uh, way to do it. So this way you can see that the mean, and we've got these values, which are those one that uh, consumed my, a uh, little of my time. Uh, and so we have 45, 71, and 1.48, okay. Um, 
So what we do now is to uh, have a look at uh, of this uh, group here. We take just the group, okay? I do this, and this is uh, this part here. Of this, I take just group. Okay, so you can see that it's repeating itself within the group. Okay, because group is this. So we search for placebo and this value and, and repeat itself. And then you can see that this is the result. Then we start calculating the difference between the outcome and the group means that we just need. So this is a way to do things. I'm not, uh, I use Tidyverse, uh, but this is a way to do things. And so you can see that this is uh, what we basically have done uh, here up above very uh, briefly, what is it, within the data set. Okay, the mean, the and the square uh, of the uh, difference, or the, devi the deviance from the mean. Okay, the same things that we are doing here. Uh, okay. What question do you have? No, so, so far I, I have no questions. Okay. Uh, and so what is what is our um, response variable? So our Y uh, variable. Um, we built up uh, a data frame, okay, with group outcome, the mean, group means the deviation of, of the means and the square division. So exactly, exactly the same, exactly the same thing that we did here, just with five um, observation. Here is the world data set, which is only 18. This is why this is the mean, okay? Uh, and so we do exactly the same thing on our, uh, on the on the data set. So obviously we could just take the clinical trial and calculate the mean deviation, the group mean and so on. Just so uh, okay. Take the, the clinical trial, which is this and then what we do is by grouping group by track and then reframe and calculate the mean of the moon gain. So as you can see, these are the values, but then they are grouped. So what we, we, we need to do is to add the other information, such as, say, the mood gain was here. And so this is our, our data set. As well, we can, add uh, the difference so between the two okay so what we do is the depth by the mean or uh, what is called here these are the group mean and this is uh, the deviation group by the mean 
And so uh, this is the difference between the mood and the group Okay, and so this is the uh, uh, device. We have it there. As well, we do the same, but we just copy and paste and modify. Call it square devs. And we square. Okay. And so uh, we have this. So uh, this is uh, uh, our Y data. Uh, so we can round all these values. We can round them. Okay. So so what we do is basically calculate the sum of square, and to do this, we sum the square depth. Okay, this one here. In, in our case, let's call it uh, y. Okay, so this is our y. And then what we do is basically calculating the Square and we sum our y of the squared depth. Okay. And so this is the value, which is quite the same because now we have used, we have calculated our values. We have, the roundness is exactly the same. So we have. So what's happened? It's basically that. Um, we can see the variation by groups, and then you can then calculate the sum of square by uh, a weighted uh, variation, weighted by the size of the sample. Okay, so here we can add uh, in our. Uh, in our set, uh, a sample size, uh, which is uh, the number of, let's say, uh, case when um, drug is equal to placebo then say six, but they are all six, so it doesn't matter. So we can just uh, repeat six uh, to the length of, I don't know, drag. Should be, okay. So they are six. And then um, what we do is a weighted square. Weighted square, which is done by um, basically, this is uh, our sample uh, square deviation. Okay. And so we multiply it by the sample size. So, this is, uh, uh, which is this now not proved by uh, what we do because we use this. Uh, this should be grouped. So this this does yeah. Now take 
our Y and group it by by drag okay. and then group it by Okay. So okay, now this is uh let's count by drag. Let's see. Okay, and now we can add uh, weighted, uh, so we don't have this uh, squared deviation, um, which are not, uh, uh, squared deviation, I don't know. Let's just see, because I think I've jumped some uh, steps. Okay, so we did the sum of square by those things, uh, and so this is the grand mean of the groups. So basically, we now are doing grand. Do you want to uh, suggest the, the steps, maybe? Uh, so we do the grand mean, Maya. Uh, my dog is, uh, let's group in by the mean, okay, so we do, group by, and then again, um, the mean, we do the mean, Which is this, huh? Okay. Let's see, we already did that. Okay, so we add this again. And so we have the mean. Okay. So what we do is we, uh, we have the square deviation. which is that. And the grand mean. Okay, so here is the mean, which is not grouping. Okay. Just the grand mean, the mean, uh, mean. Do, do you think you need a group before mutate? Yeah, this is a reframe should uh, have uh, done. Mood gain not found. Um, okay. What does it mean? Uh, ah, okay, because it's not there anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, right. right. It's not there anymore. So we do. Okay, so let's. Uh, uh, now I think it's about an hour. About 45 minutes. Um, but anyway, so the, the, the procedure is always the same. So then uh, if we do like just adding, okay? So this, if you see that if we do like Y and uh, this mode gain, and then we calculate the mean, which is the grand mean. 
okay, this is this, the mean. Um, this is the grand mean, okay? So let's call it uh, grand mean. And then we add this to with a mutate. Okay, uh, so now we calculate the deviation. And the deviation is the mean or the group mean. Okay. okay, here we go. The group mean minus the grand mean. Uh, which is there, and then what do we do is the square deviation, which is the deviation squared. And we still haven't done the, the ANOVA, but which is just, uh, just a, a function, but we are building up what's happening inside of the ANOVA function. And so these are, this is rounded, but it is just the same. So now what's happened here, do we have everything there? We add uh, the sample size, which is, um, let's say, six, six, six. So we have the sample size, and then we can uh, calculate the weighted, uh, let's, call it, let's call it like that, which is the deviation of these things on the sample size times the square deviation, uh, which is now that. Okay, so. Once that's done, okay, you do the sum of square of this thing. Let's call it data four. Okay, how was data four? Uh, and so what we do is data four and the uh, weighted square, and we do the sum. Okay, so this is uh, 3.5, uh, 3.45, uh, and then you can apply all the things that, that we did it. And so, uh, you can see, this is what is done. So you do now want to calculate the degree of freedom. So the, as you can see, we have two different uh, sub uh, things. Okay, so this is uh, showing you how to to do the things. So, uh, so we now like to calculate the degree of freedom, which is uh, the group minus one, and then it's uh, okay. So we have uh, we know that we have calculated the sum of square for both, yeah, as you can see here, it's B, here is uh, W, so we have both of them, okay, this is uh, F S B. Uh, we nearly there. We have SSW and SSB. Okay, these are the two values that we uh, just calculated. So what we want is to basically uh, consider the degree of freedom. And so, uh, the calculated the degree of freedom. See, we have a group 
of trees, uh, and we have 18 number of observations. The first one, let's assign here, uh, degree of freedom for B, it's uh, G, which is, I think uh, I've said, uh, set the value. I've set the value to two, right there. Shouldn't be two. Okay, because I've set the, because it's it's went through, uh, you see this uh, cool and uncool. Okay, now we set it again. So uh, we said G to three and N to 18. So this is minus one and the degree of freedom is uh, W. And okay, so having said these things, we can now calculate uh, the two mean square values uh, by divided one by the other. Okay, so let's call it uh, M S B. And we do as S B divided B, and then M S W and S W divided B. And so we have both of them, and we finally calculate the F test, which is M S B divided M S. Let's call it And so this is uh, our uh, F uh, test. And we can even have a look at the uh, distribution uh, and uh, the values. Okay, so one way or another, show it, uh, show it a significant effect on drug, on new gain. So if, for example, apply to these groups uh, using 2 and 15, we can see that there is something that we find it uh, Okay, I think we we uh, we can. Well, our time is up. Uh, let's have a look at. Uh, uh, let's have a look at the chapter. The rest of the chapter. Uh, Running, uh, so we see here, uh, then we can use the function ANOVA, uh, applying the formula. So we can see the function. Then it goes to calculate the, the model and have a look at this. Um, I hope that that was uh, useful. I'm not sure if there's uh, any questions. Not really. It was clear as we uh, did the test step by step. So, yeah, I think it was clear. Uh, and so, as you can see, there is the uh, 
accidentally uh, values correction for the p values when you have a larger data set uh, and then uh, when it goes through the robust and robust ANOVA and all the other ones. Okay, to the residual sum of squares and additional details. I think we need uh, one more week to complete this challenge. Okay, but yeah. Um, the, the first part is always the most useful because once you uh, 